Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now today, I'm going to make something a little bit different. YouTube's an amazing place because of the way it connects you to people and cultures from all over the world and lots of different ways of doing things. And one of the videos I watched recently, which I thought was really interesting, and I'll put a link to it in the information below, was how to make Rice Krispies. And in particular, uh, the video I was watching was, I think, based in some like India, in like in a rural setting, and they're making it the natural way. So they weren't making it in a big factory. And to do that, they had the the rice, and they, they sort of wash the rice, and then they dried it out, and they put it in some really boiling sand, and it sort of popped um, a bit like popcorn. I thought oh, that's interesting. I wonder if I could do something like that. Now I don't have the sand, I don't have the same raw equipment that they they use, and I'm only barely understanding how it actually works. But I'm going to try and do a version of that. But instead of using hot sand because I don't have any hot sand, I'm going to use oil, and I've got some plain whole grain rice. So. I'm gonna have a go and see if I can make rice krispies myself at home. Now, I don't quite know how to do it in the Kellogg's factory, but I'm gonna make some myself. And let's see what it comes out like. Let's get started. All right, so as far as I can understand, this is a procedure I think you do. I'm not entirely sure why every stage is in there. I'm just gonna try and copy what I've seen them do, and then we'll see what kind of results we get. So the first thing that they seem to do, and this is me watching them in a rural setting, so I don't, I can't see clearly, and don't, there is no description, but I think, first thing they do is they add a little water to the rice, not much, and then they spend quite a bit of time mixing it through. Not entirely sure why. My guess, if I was to try and work it out from a food tech, science point of view, is that mixing the water, a little bit of water, gets in, a little bit of water gets inside the actual grain itself, and sunlight must soften or pre-do something. So when it goes into the hot environment, maybe the, the sudden evaporation of the water on the inside makes it swell up and burst, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. I looked at this stage and thought, maybe this stage isn't necessary, but I'm gonna go as clear to what I saw them do as possible. So add a little water, and it's been about a good two or three minutes mixing all the way through. Don't know why, but I'm gonna do that myself, see what happens. Okay, so I've mixed it around for about two or three minutes. I can't tell exactly what difference that's actually made. It's, I think some of those starches are starting to be released, but I don't know if it's the agitation or the water. I'm not entirely sure what the stage does. Maybe I'll have to do an experiment to do with or without, but for now, I'm gonna try and copy what I thought, think I saw them doing as best as possible, and let's see what kind of results we get. We get. So the next thing I saw them do, which is interesting, is after they spent all the time putting the water in and mix it round, they spent about five minutes slowly drying it back out again. So, so let's go over to the hob and uh, do the drying out stage. So what I've done, I just dropped in the rice, and on the video which I was watching, they seem to after they've put the moisture in, they seem to have dried out the rice. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. I'm just going to try and dry it out on the stove. Like I said, I'm not quite sure exactly what this stage does, but I'm not quite sure if I'm going to get rice crispies. First time I'm doing it, but we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and dry these out for a good five minutes and then return back to see what we get. Okay, I've been sort of Drying them out now for about five minutes. I think they're dry. I think there's a, I think they're supposed to be dry. So I'm gonna stop that now. So far, we've sort of half soaked or mixed in a few tablespoons of water into our rice grains, and then we dry them back out again. And I'm not sure exactly what difference that's made. The rice grains seem a little softer, uh, seem a little more translucent, so maybe it's done something. The next stage now, when I was watching a video, what they did, they actually dropped, they actually put the rice into hot sand. So they had sand on like a, a bowl thing that's heated with cold, and as soon as the, the sand went in, they mixed the sand all around, so the heat went all around the, the, the rice, and they started to just puff up like popcorn, like rice krispies, and then they sifted out the sand and put the rice crisps on one side and the sand back in the heat. Now we don't have sand, maybe 
I'll try and I'll get some sand and, and clean it and, and try that another time. So instead of using sand, I'm going to use oil because I've also seen a technique done using oil, not quite as as healthy um, because obviously we're using we're sort of frying in a way. Um, but at least let's see by way of experiment if we get the similar kind of results. I'm going to pour in some oil. Now the cool thing about this is that I've never done this before, so I don't know what I'm going to get. And I'm still thinking, and I'm in two minds, I think, well, if it doesn't come out well, I'm even going to show you my, my, uh, my failed attempt. But maybe I will, maybe I won't. If you see this, maybe you're only going to see it because it actually worked. We shall see. Anyway, I'm going to heat up the oil, and then I'm going to drop one rice grain in to see what happens. And if that appears to be a success, then I'll drop a few more in. And then we'll see what happens, and I'll fish them out with this. Well, I've thrown a grain in. It's not as if I come out like what I call popcorn. I come out like what I call Rice Krispies, keep going popcorn. Uh, not working out yet. Nope. This hasn't worked as far as I'm concerned. So, I'm going to try a couple more grains with the temperature a little bit higher. And then what I do, because it's not, that's not worked, I'm not going to dump a whole bunch of grass in there, I'm going to cook the rice, then try it again, see what comes out. Okay, so I've cooked the rice now, and it's just, uh, I just let it dry out a little bit on this sort of sieve. And to make it dry out further, I'm going to put this in the oven, uh, just so it gets really, really dry, evaporates all the water out, Next step, drop in the oil, let's see what happens. Let's see if we end up at some part of this process with anything that looks like um, Rice Krispies. So I'm going to pop this in the oven just to kind of dry this out a little bit, maybe for half an hour, an hour or so, then we'll return. Okay, so our rice is out of the oven. It's been kind of half cooked and then fully dried out. I'll tip it into here. All right. Okay, what I'm going to do now is drop it into, heat up our oil, drop it in, see what happens. Alright, I preheated it, the oil's pretty hot, I'm going to throw in some rice, let's just see what happens. Woo! Here we go. Kind of works. What am I going to do? I'm going to throw it all in. What the heck? Woo! Here it's not crackling, crackling and popping. There we go. Pour it off. Some puffed rice. There you go. It's worked. A little bit of a time consuming process, but I'm sure if you with a bit of practice you can refine that. Now depending on what kind of rice you use will depend on how fat it fluffed up. This is just whole grain rice. Maybe I'll try it again with different types of rice, but that's not a bad result. So there we have it. How to make rice krispies. I think that's been a decently successful experiment. I think we can get better even better results if we use the same kind of rice that is actually using Rice Krispies. Um, but for this particular whole grain variety, I think we can at least see that it has puffed up. It's crispy, 
tastes quite nice. I think we'll call that success. What we need to do now, put it in a little container. And we've got a nice taste of cereal to use or snack whenever we want. So once again, thanks for joining us at Food Tech 101. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, Food Tech 101 is now also on Facebook and Instagram. And you can also get us by email at uh, admin at foodtech101.co.uk. As always, my name is Mr. Lightbird, but you can call me sir.